Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Forza Horizon 2 with an investigation into rally cars. See, a little while ago we did a versus the community on here. I built a four-wheel drive uh, Williams Clio and it really struggled when it came to going off-road. And it kind of got me thinking as to what would make a good rally car. What makes a car be either good or bad when you go to take it uh, off-road in this game? So I set up kind of sort of two, two investigations in this. First of all is about parts. Are there any racing parts that makes a car suddenly struggle when it comes to driving off-road? I came up with the two most likely offending parts. The first being the suspension. I mean, if you take the weight out of a car, it's going to go quicker whether it's on dirt or tarmac. But if you put racing suspension on a car and then try and drive it off-road, would it make it worse? I mean, in theory, it could do. I mean, on a, on a tarmac smooth racetrack, yes, the car is going to go quicker with a, with a lower centre of mass, it's going to be better handling. But taking a car off-road, where there are bumps to worry about, where the surface is very different, would having the racing suspension make the car more difficult to drive? Would it make the car slower? Now, on here, I mean, you can throw a Lamborghini off-road and it's going to survive. The car isn't actually going to fall apart, if you like, but I wanted if the time down this particular course would be uh, any slower. I did three runs with the, uh, the Ford RS200 completely standard. I did three runs with the car with racing suspension at the fastest times, and it was about half a second quicker. Not a massive difference, but it was a little bit quicker uh, running with the, with the racing suspension which is probably about the same sort of time difference you'd see running down a, a normal a normal road course, if you like, normal tarmac course. The other big part that could uh, play a factor is the tyres. Now, race tyres are going to make you go a hell of a lot quicker when you're driving around the track, but that's on a lovely smooth flat tarmac surface. Would the race tyres be good when it came to using it on a very different surface? You certainly notice the difference in, in surfaces when you're driving down them. You do have a far less grip when you're driving down this down this these dirt roads. Put on the race tyres though, I went nine seconds quicker. They make it a lot better. This is much, much quicker. It's noticeable so, so much easier to drive down these courses. So, so far, the cars are pretty much the same as building any sort, sort of vehicle when it comes to racing uh, with, with the parts. But that is on an actual proper full-on rally car. So then I started getting thinking about would different types of car make a difference to this. Now to make this completely fair test, or as fair as I can do it, I set up a, a few rules. So the first one was all of these cars that I'm using here have been built to A class, and they've all been built in as close a way as possible. So they've all been made four wheel drive. They've all been given race brakes, race suspension, race tyres. The rest of the PI to make them into A class has been upgraded just using engine parts. So it's as close as I can do in this game. Okay, I can't, I can't make it 100% completely enough. This is the best that I can, I can, I can get the thing to work at. Uh, they were each then given three runs down this course, and this is the route that I, that I, I can find that has the most off-road. Most of the courses are like 60% tarmac and or 60% gravel, sorry, and 40% tarmac. This is more like 85% gravel. It's the best rally sort of pure rally stage that uh, I can get. There's a little bit of tarmac in there. I can't do, can't do much better. Uh, so the first car that I ran, three uh, uh, a Fiat, sorry, uh, 131, uh, designed as a rally car. Yes, it was a rear-wheel drive one, but it was designed as a rally car, and it was quite a nice vehicle to drive, and it set a benchmark down the course. The next vehicle I used was a BMW 2002 Turbo. I tried to keep it as sort of as similar to the Fiat as I could. It's around the same age, or it's, it's, it's fairly close in age. Again, it was another car that was designed to be rear-wheel drive. It's roughly the same size, the BMW perhaps a little bit bigger. Again, upgraded in a, a similar sort of manner, but this was never designed to be a rally car. It wasn't designed to go off-road as such and to be rallied in, in, in such a way that I am. Yes, it was designed to be, I think it was designed to be a race car, sort of a touring car sort of thing, but it wasn't designed for this kind of terrain. So I wondered, would that play, it, play, a, play a part? Would that make an impact on the times? Truth be told, not really. These two cars set some very similar times down this course. The BMW was a little bit harder to drive, I think. It was a little bit more oversteery, uh, perhaps a little bit more twitchy, but it wasn't It wasn't by, by very much. And yeah, they both set very similar times down this route. The next vehicle that, uh, <laughs> that would have a go was the Ram Runner. This is designed for going off-road. It is a big, 
off-road, almost raid truck, if you like. Uh, again, upgraded in a very similar manner. I use the Ram Runner because my other options, sort of the Rally Fighter or the Bowler, both start off in A-Class and you can't really get racing tyres and the, the proper parts on it. So, uh, yeah, I went for the for, for the Ram Runner. And this is designed for extreme off-roading. This terrain is perhaps even a little bit tame for the Ram Runner, but it certainly shouldn't have any problems dealing with the bumps and the jumps and so on. It is still a big truck and it is still quite a heavy truck compared to uh, some of the other vehicles, probably by far the heaviest thing that we have here. So it's not quite as agile as some of the, uh, the rally cars that will, that will go down here. It's not as easy to drive, it's not quite as responsive. Of course it deals with all of the off-road stuff absolutely fine. It still sets a decent time, but it's not quite as responsive as some of the other vehicles uh, that we had down here. I was trying to think of some perhaps inappropriate cars that you would never, ever, ever possibly see rallying. So I went for a Pontiac GTO. I don't think one of these has ever gone rallying, as far as I know of. Uh, again, yes, I know I've converted a Pontiac GTO to all-wheel drive. It had to be done for the sake of keeping this as a fair test. Uh, I know that's slightly no-no, but it, it had to be done, okay? Uh, this was actually one of the biggest surprises of the entire, the entire day, really. I thought this would be quite hard to drive, even making it four-wheel drive and giving it race tires. I thought this would be a bit of a pain, trying to get this down the rally course. It was actually really nice. This was a really very, very good car to drive. It was very easy to drive down this rally course. I had no problems, uh, no real problems with it sliding around. Sure, there is less grip and everything's going to slide around when you chuck it about on the dirt. But it was a very nice and easy to control car. And this is a vehicle that was designed for drag racing, pretty much. It wasn't really designed for normal cornering, let alone being thrown down a rally course. The, the GTO really was a <laughs> very, very good car. Uh, looking for some more vehicles, I came across, uh, oh, I went for a Honda Civic. This is a lot more sensible choice of a of a rally car, and as you can see, it's nowhere near as nice to drive. This is far more oversteery, far more twitchy than the big Pontiac. This is a little, sort of, pretty sensible hatchback, uh, or hot hatch, I should say, being thrown down a rally course, and this really struggled. This is a very, very tough car to drive, because it just wanted to slide around. Converting this car to four-wheel drive did not do it any favours. And a little while back I did a drivetrain investigation thing, and when I was messing about with these, these front-wheel drive cars, making them four-wheel drive, they all seemed to struggle on a similar thing. They became very oversteering, when they, and they went much faster down this course, being kept as a front-wheel drive. And the same could be certainly said about the Civic. Again, it really struggled. Really struggled being driven down here in four-wheel drive. It was very twitchy and very hard to, to get a good time out of it. I wondered if it was perhaps just the uh, the Honda Civic. I gave another go for a, a sort of a, a small hatchback, this time going for the uh, the John Cooper Works Mini. Again, got a very, very similar result with this car. It seems to be that making a front-wheel drive car four-wheel drive utterly ruins the handling when it comes to being driven off-road. On the tarmac, it's absolutely fine. For whatever reason, when you go to take it off-road, it does crazy things. I mean, the, the Pontiac was fine around there. The Fiat, the BMW, all of them were fine uh, on this course. I mean, yes, they slid around, they would slide a bit through the corners, but none of them have the same sort of ferocious oversteer that you get in this car. And it's just constantly being slowed down with uh, with these sudden bursts of sideways. It's not good for a, a, good, a good stage time, if you like. And these cars were really struggling. They were very, very twitchy. And as you can see there, I've gone exploring uh, a little bit more of the track. I was curious if it was just a front-wheel drive problem. It was just because I was converting the drivetrain from front-wheel drive that was upsetting the cars. Or was it because the cars that I was using that were front-wheel drive had tiny wheelbases? Was it having such a small wheelbase that was causing uh, the problem? So I went for an in a Cura Integra. This is one of the biggest front-wheel drive cars, like lengthways, I could find, giving it as, as stable a as platform as, uh, as I could. And this was much better. It wasn't perfect, as we can see there. It was still a lot more oversteery than a muscle car that we had down here, but it was a lot better. It was easier to drive and it set a much quicker time down the stage than the Civic and the Mini did. Uh, and I'm guessing that the, the wheelbase is playing a bit of a part, or a fairly sizable part uh, in this. It would probably still be quicker if I had left it as front-wheel drive. It still wasn't the nicest car in the world to get down this course, but it was better. It was easier to control, and yeah, as I said, they said a, a quicker time. On the subject of wheelbases, 
Well, why not have a go with a Renault 5? I mean, this is a tiny, tiny car, uh, and it is it's designed to go rallying, so maybe putting a four-wheel drive thing in this car would make it very quick, or maybe it would be a horrible mess to drive. I didn't really know what to expect. Well, it was quite quick. It still set a good time down the stage, even with me making it four-wheel drive, but it wasn't easy to drive. It was one of the, probably one of the more difficult cars I had to take down this rally stage, even though it is, yes, it is designed to be a, a rally car. It was a bit of a fight keeping it uh, together. I, I, I think it's a, probably a factor of things. Uh, perhaps having the engine in the middle, uh, it wasn't a, a huge fan of having that. Maybe the weight distribution was playing a little bit of a part in this. And maybe it wasn't too happy about having a different drive track, like different drive line to what it was designed to have. Whether it is just having the shorter wheelbase, I can't quite be sure uh, which one it is that plays the biggest part uh, in all of that. Uh, yeah, while it was quick, it wasn't the easiest of, of vehicles to drive. Now, as I was using A-Class, we couldn't really have any of the supercars take on this stage because they're all in sort of S1 and S2. Uh, but I kind of got a, a, a similar idea going with a Toyota MR2. This is a low-slung Japanese sports car. Again, not designed for this sort of thing. Yes, it's designed to be a fast car, and there are plenty of these that are, that are raced on, on normal circuits. But it was never really intended to be a rally car. I'm sure somebody's tried to rally one at some point, but it wasn't, it wasn't designed for this. And again, we're running it on racing suspension, so it is pretty damn low to the ground, and if anything was going to really struggle with, uh, with ground clearance, it would be something like this. But again, the MR2 had absolutely no problems driving down this course. Now, it may not be the fastest A-Class car that, uh, that I could pick, and it wasn't the fastest car to go down the, the rally stage, but there was no problems with using this as a rally vehicle. It was still perfectly easy to drive and perfectly controllable to drive down this uh, particular rally stage. I then got a little bit crazy. Seeing as the MR2 had survived without any problems, why not go for a classic Le Mans race car, a Jaguar D-Type? Most definitely not designed for this sort of tray that would probably fall apart if you showed it a dirt road, <laughs> like one of these. Not at all intended to be raced in this particular manner, not intended to be a four-wheel drive car particularly. But I put all of the parts on. It was probably one of the least powerful cars that we had here, of course, because it's also one of the lightest cars we had here, so the, uh, the PI is sort of trying to even everything out. Uh, this was a very nice car to drive down this stage. It was a very, very nice vehicle to drive. It was very, very quick down a rally stage. This is a Le Mans race car and it was absolutely flying down here. One of the easier cars to drive, sure, and as I said, everything is going to have less grip down here, but you could carry an awful lot of speed in the Jaguar E-Type, and Jaguar D-Type, sorry, and it set yeah, a very, very impressive time. With the D-Type going quickly, I then wondered about my Alpha 33. This is my A-Class car of choice if I want to set a really quick time around a track. Maybe a little bit OP, this Alpha, uh, but it's a phenomenally quick car when it comes to uh, racing on, on roads. So I wondered how it would do off-road. Converted it to four-wheel drive and did all of the parts, etc. And this flew down the rally stage. Set the fastest time of the day. Actually put me eighth in the world on the leaderboards, I think. This car was phenomenally quick when, uh, <laughs> when tasked with going down a rally stage. Again, another classic race car, very low to the ground. Uh, this vehicle, in fact, has kind of a funky uh, <laughs> weight distribution. It does bounce a little bit funnily off some of the jumps you saw a bit earlier. It can be, it can be a little bit scary. The suspension on this car is quite scary. It's not upgradable, so it's just the standard suspension on the vehicle, which always makes things a little bit interesting. I think this is the only car that I uh, had to run with the standard suspension, but it was stupidly quick uh, down the rally stage. So with the Alpha going very, very fast, I wondered about you know a proper rally car. Now this thing is designed to be four-wheel drive, designed to be used in rallying. I've got the the Escort uh, Cosworth here. How would this fare being uh, upgraded? I mean, this is it, its home territory, if you like. And if you look at the leaderboards for well, for this stage, this is the only stage I can really compare fairly because this is the only one that's mostly dirt. The cars at the top of the leaderboards are, apart from a couple of Alphas that are lying around, are mostly rally vehicles. You're talking Subarus, Lancias. Uh, Mitsubishi Evos, I've forgotten all of them, but uh, they're, they're mostly the purpose-built uh, rally vehicles. And the Escort was very good down here. It was it was a very nice car to drive, very very easy to drive. Didn't have too many problems with the vehicle, 
and it will go on to set a, a nice a nice and quick time. Yeah, it was as expected really. The, <laughs> the Escort Cosworth is a pretty damn good rally vehicle. Uh, my final vehicle for the day was a Nissan Skyline, the R33 Skyline. The reason I'm using this is the other cars, um, the other cars that weren't designed for rally that I had down here, were all had all been drivetrain swapped in some way. So I wondered what a car that was designed to be four-wheel drive would be like coming down coming down this particular route. It wasn't quite as quick as the Escort. It wasn't quite, but that could just be that it's not quite as good as an A-class car. There are as good as the PI system is in Horizon 2. It's actually pretty damn pretty damn good. Uh, the there are still sometimes small variations. Some cars are better in A class than others, uh, so that would certainly play a little bit of a part in all of these. Uh, the, the Skyline was was good, not quite as fast um, as the Escort, but it didn't have it didn't have any problems. Again, I mean, this is another car. It was designed sort of to go racing. It raced in some some touring car stuff, but it wasn't designed so much as a rally car. Uh, but it, it certainly held its own when coming down uh, this course. And again, like all the other vehicles, it had no real major problems with the bumps uh, and the jumps that it was faced. So on to the times and it is the two classic race cars that go to the top of the leaderboard with the Alpha 33 going almost four seconds quicker than anything else. Then it's a seriously fast car uh, in A-class, that's stupendously quick. Uh, third and fourth go to the two naturally four-wheel drive vehicles, if you like the Ford Escort and the R33 Skyline, with the Pontiac GTO doing very well to find himself in 5th. The Renault 5 then leads the, uh, the 256 section, fractionally though, from the uh, MR2 and the BMW. And to be fair to the Fiat, it was the very first car that I took down the order. So perhaps if it had run a bit later, it may have gone a little bit higher up, but in all honesty, it would never have gone quicker than the uh, the GTO. The Ram Runner, even with its big heavy duty off-roading suspension, couldn't go much faster at the end of the day. It's still a big, uh, big heavy off-road truck. Uh, but it's you know the suspension or the fact that it's designed for off-roading uh, didn't prove to be of, of a huge amount of use uh, comparing it to the other vehicles here and then we go to the uh, the front wheel drive section or the formerly front wheel drive section I should say with the uh, the Acura RSX the quickest of the lot and certainly the nicest to drive still a way off the rest of the vehicles though these, these cars are all at the very top of A class they're all exactly the same PI uh, and the Civic and the Mini five seconds behind the Acura quite a lot that's, that's a lot of time that uh, that them two lost uh, over the course of of that of that route so as far as conclusions go well there are two that i can draw from this the first one being that if you are building a car to go off road do not take a front wheel drive car and make it four wheel drive it does not work i can't quite decide what it is i think it's probably a combination of most of front wheel drive cars having short wheelbases uh, so perhaps naturally being a little bit more twitchy and then you throw onto that not being designed for four wheel drive and perhaps a bit interesting weight distribution and they just can't deal with it for whatever reason none of them have liked it. the Acura is the best that I drove but even that wasn't massively happy about it I mean the Civic the Mini they struggled the, my my Clio I did in the Versus community struggled and when I did a driveline thing a while back they struggled as well keep the front wheel drive cars as front wheel drive they'll be much much better when it comes to uh, to off-roading uh, the other conclusion that uh, that i can draw from this is that as far as a type of car goes there isn't really any specific sort of vehicle that is uh, that is better at off-roading than others i mean two classic r race cars one this cars that would probably fall apart if you showed them a dirt road have gone far, have gone quickest with the Alpha going phenomenally quicker. A muscle car has gone quicker than a Group B or a car that was designed to be a Group B rally vehicle. And a Toyota MR2 survived it all quicker than a BMW touring car. Uh, there isn't a particular type of car that gives you an advantage really uh, in 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 any in any huge way on here. What I would say is if you are building a a rally car, build uh, build an A-class four-wheel drive car. You know, it doesn't matter if you're driving it on tarmac or if you're driving it on dirt, it's going to be just as quick. Uh, if you build a fast four-wheel drive Alpha 33, it's going to be fast on the tarmac, it's going to be fast uh, on, on, on the dirt. Uh, if you build a fast four-wheel drive Ford Escort, it's going to be quick on the tarmac, it's going to be quick 
uh, off-road. Uh, build, building the car specifically for rallying, you don't do anything different. You don't do anything to build the car differently uh, on the off-road stuff. It deals with it exactly the same. Uh, what I will say is that, you, as, as I said earlier, that the top of the leaderboards uh, for, for this stage did tend to be uh, Lancia, Deltas, uh, Subarus, uh, Mitsubishi Evos and so on. What I think the reason for that is, is they are slightly better suited to being A-class four-wheel drive cars. You can perhaps get a bit more performance out of them, keeping them within the, the PI limit. The cars that I used here were built to be as close to each other as I possibly could, not necessarily to be the ultimate best way to get the performance out of the vehicles uh, in A-Class. They were built to be even to each other to see if the actual physical type of vehicle itself made any difference. So when you're building a car to be to be going off-road, build the best A-Class four-wheel drive vehicle you can. It doesn't matter where you build it because it's going to be quick uh, wherever if it's, if it's a good uh, A-Class vehicle. Yeah, four-wheel drive, definitely your better option than rear-wheel drive for this, but do not, for the love of God, change a front-wheel drive car because they get really, really unhappy. Uh, so there we go that is uh, that is it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and until next time a uh, goodbye